Hi guys, it's Matt here from PilotPracticeExams.com where you can pass in half the time. Now I want to do something with um, density height and pressure height. This one's just going to blow your mind how simple this is, right? Um, I put together that poll and asked you, you know, what are you struggling with in terms of your pilot? And lots and lots of people said density and pressure height. Um, I'll have to do C of G separately, but this one is dead simple, guys. So I threw together this altitude calculator on my website. Um, you can access it here in other altitude calculator. Now come in here and please, please, please come in here and have a play till you learn this. This is so dead simple and once you get this in your head, you are never going to forget how to do this ever. And it's so important because you really, really need to know this when you're taking off at airports at altitude. Um, it's a huge cause of accidents and um, CASA really, and RAOs, but CASA in particular, really emphasise it in their exams and there's generally heaps of questions on it. So check this out, this is just incredible once you know this little trick. Okay, so this calculator has two parts. The top part deals with pressure altitude only. Now pressure altitude basically means um, what is the, the pressure height based on the Q and H and the elevation. So you can just play with these sliders and watch the effect of Q and H, okay, as it goes up and down. And then you can watch the effect of elevation which over change in different amount. That's the only reason I've set that up. There's the formula. But guys, you don't even need to know the formulas to work this out. So check this out, right? This is incredible. Okay, so the standard atmospheric pressure is 1013. Right, now let's pick um, 1000 just because it's really easy to work with. Okay, so we've got a pressure altitude, when it's 1013, a pressure altitude at 1000 um, feet elevation or altitude is going to equal 1000. Now, we don't need to know this formula because watch, let me show you this nifty little trick and this is why I put this together so you can have a play. What happens if we change the Q and H by 10? Okay, so if we go 1023, look what happens. The, the pressure altitude varied by 300 feet. 10, 300 feet. 10, 300 feet. Watch. So look what happens when we go the other way and we go to 1003, which is 1013 minus 10. Okay, so now we're at 1300 feet. Okay, so it's still 300 feet. So all you've got to remember is that a Q and H variation of 10 is 300 feet. And then you just got to work out which way it goes. Now that's, that's super simple. Because basically, if the pressure goes down, it's like our, our we've got less air particles and our the performance lift performance of our aircraft and the engine performance is going to be worse. But so how much worse? 300 feet. If the pressure goes up, we've got more air, air particles. How much better is it going to be? Per 10, it's going to be 300 feet. So once you know that 10 equals 300 feet, that's simple maths. Okay. That you can do that in your head based on anything and you'll be able to work out the pressure altitude. So if it went another 10, so if we went down to 993, okay, now we've got a 600 feet difference. If we went up to 1033, which is 20 feet above the standard, okay, it's it was 1000, it's 400 now, so it's 600 feet. So again, 10 equals 300 or 20 equals 600. All you have to remember is 10 equals 300 for pressure height. And then you just got to be able to work out which way it goes. Now, working out which way it goes is really, really simple. As I said, with the um, if the pressure's uh, low, if the pressure's going lower, then it's going to be the performance is less, and it's going to be like trying to fly at a higher altitude because our performance goes down as we go up in altitude. Okay, so that's the first part of the equation. Because what you have actually, when you work out density altitude, pressure altitude, remember, is just the effect of Q and H and elevation. Okay, density altitude, we have to work out the effect of, of Q and H and, and elevation or altitude. Then we have to work out the effect of temperature and then we have to add the two together. So, you can do that first part in your head now, I don't even need to tell you, okay. So, let's just change it, to keep it simple for this example, let's change it back to 1013 and 1000. So that we can ignore any effect there and we can see the size of this effect. Now the standard temperature for sea level, outside air temperature, is 15 degrees C. So, um, and, and this is the one you don't want to change here. Okay, now this one here doesn't actually do anything, you can just change that and it's not going to vary anything anywhere, it's just for you to keep your notes. But let's say we're at 15 degrees C, which is the standard temperature, okay, and we're at um, zero feet, 
we're at sea level. So the, the outside air temp is 15, the standard temp is 15, the ISA temp diff is just the difference between that and that, and you just manually input it. So in this case it's zero. So when we're at 1013 at zero feet, and we've got the exact right temperature, okay, it equals zero feet. Okay, but watch what happens as the temperature rises. So let's say the outside temperature is now 25 degrees. So it's a full 10 degrees warmer than uh, the standard sea level temp. So some of you should already, bells should start ticking. Wow, is this going to make my performance better or worse, better or worse, better or worse? It's going to make it worse, okay, because hot temperatures make your... Um, they make the air particles spread out and therefore you've got less air particles giving you lift and so the, your lift isn't as good. So let's have a look what happens. So now the eyes are temp is 10 degrees. There's 10 degrees variation between that and that and it's positive 10. Okay, it's 10 degrees warmer. So look what happens when we put in 10 there. 1200 feet. So taking off at sea level on a 25 degree day is effectively like taking off at 1200 feet. Now that's if the Q&H is exactly that. Okay, now before I get into mixing in the Q&H, let me just show you a few other examples. If this goes up to 35, which is another 10 degrees, so for 10 degrees warmer here, it's 1200 feet. When we go up to 35 and we change the, the difference between 15 to 35 is plus 20, okay, look what happens. The density altitude went up by another 1,200 feet. So in other words, what that's telling you is that the for every 10 degrees warmer in degrees Celsius above the ISA temp, you're going to go up by 1,200 feet. So again, you've got another simple amount of mass that you can use. So that means for every 1 degrees, you're going to go up by 120 feet. Every 10 degrees, you're going to go up by 1,200 feet. If it's minus 10, then it's going to be negative 1200 okay so that's the way you know you can do simple maths and work this out without even having access to a calculator and if you forget the formulas as long as you remember 10 degrees for pressure out of 10 sorry a pressure difference of 10 on the q and h is going to give you 300 feet and you remember which way it goes and then a temperature difference of 10 degrees is going to give you 1200 feet so that would make it really simple maths if they gave us a pressure difference of say 10 degrees let's go 1023 we know it's going to be 300 feet we just got to work out which direction let's go the other way to make it easier for you so 1003 so the pressure's dropped it's going to be 300 feet and this one if the pressure was say 10 degrees warmer than it should be at a certain height then it's going to be um, 1200 feet and when we add those two together it's going to be 1500 feet see okay just simple maths now what about if it's five feet we should be able to do this in our head too sorry five degrees and five q and h so five q and h if it if it drops by five q and h which would be 1018 you should be able to work that in your, in your head already that that's going to be 150 feet okay if the temperature was just five degrees warmer than the standard, then what that's going to mean is instead of being 1200 feet, it's going to be 600. So our answer is going to be 750 feet. So watch, okay? When the when the air, outside air temperature is warmer by 20, okay, um, sorry, by five degrees, then you're going to have a five a 600 foot difference there. When we add the 150 that we got up there, we got 750. Okay, it's dead simple maths. Now the only other thing you've got to be able to work out is this ISA temp deviation. Okay, because at sea level it's 15 degrees, but as we go up in altitude, okay, it's not 15. So here's the formula. But watch this. So I've, again, I've changed the Q and H back to 1013 um, just to make it simple. And at five, and I put input 5,000 there. So the pressure altitude when it's 1013 is going to be 5,000. But what is the ISA temp? In other words, what is the standard temperature at 5,000 feet on a normal day in a standard atmosphere? And it's 5 degrees. Now, how do we work that out? 
Remember at sea level it was 15. Well, it's just 15 minus 2 times the number of thousands of feet. So at 5,000, okay, it's 15 minus 2 times 5. At 10,000, it's going to be 15 minus 2 times 20. So, for example, watch, watch this eyes attempt if I go up to 10,000. Okay, that should turn into a negative number. Okay, so 15 minus 2 times 10 is 15 times minus 20, okay, is negative 5. If I go up um, to 15,000, then that's going to be 15 minus 30, okay? So 15 minus 30 is minus 15. So guys, all you got to remember to absolutely nail this is just three really, really simple things, okay? And you need to know which way um, the performance is going to move. But believe me, you, me, you have to know that. They're going to hammer you with a number of questions on that anyway. So you have to know that anyway. And remember, if it's warmer or hotter, um, then it's going to be like flying at a higher altitude. And if the pressure is lower, then it's going to be like flying at a higher altitude. Okay? So in other words, we're going to add the numbers and they're going to get bigger and bigger. If, if the temperature is lower or the pressure is higher, then it's going to be like flying at a lower altitude and we're going to start deducting things, okay? So the three things you have to remember are simple as this. For every 10 um, hectopascals in Q and H, it's going to move the pressure altitude by 300. For every 10 degrees in the eyes attempt, it's going to move the density altitude by 1200, okay? And then you just have to know how to work out your eyes attempt. And that's just simple. Remember, it's 15 minus 2 times your number of thousands of feet. Okay, and you can just rote learn that. 15 minus 2 times the number of thousands of feet. 15 minus 2 times the number of thousands of feet. 15, just say it out loud, say it out loud, say it out loud. Like I am now. Now guys, if you do that, you're going to absolutely nail this. If you forget any of this or you don't really understand it, jump in here, play with this, and then ask me in the Facebook group. Because chances are, if it's still not clear to you, it's not clear to others. But please come in here and have a good play with this first. So I hope that's helped, really helped, guys. Please... Join in, um, you know, and join up on the website. Grab access to all our uh, pilot exams, you know, and I'm, I'm happy to help you really get through and nail this stuff. You know, there's easy and hard ways to learn this. And doing these practice exams and learning these types of tactics really is the way to do it, guys. So thanks very much for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, please give us a like, share, or comment to let me know um, that this is, you know, exactly what you needed. Thanks, guys.